What's up, everybody? Welcome to the House of Mario, episode 73, and we are the Nintendo Podcast, the part of the Epic Collective. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and joining me, as always, is the boisterous bartender, Bryce DeWitt. The boisterous bartender, Bryce DeWitt. No, he's, he's a crazy man. You should see this man. He's just bouncing around the bar, just serving beer, just doing whatever I'm so boisterous. <laughs> uh, this week on the show, we're going to be talking about a few small news stories but this week's all about pretty much anticipating Super Smash Brothers that comes out at the end of this week. Yep. Ah, oh, finally. As as finally. Of, as of today, it's five days. Yeah. So this is on a Sunday. Sunday. We're on a Sunday. So yep. when you're listening to this, it's going to be three days. Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got to do the maths on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm more pre-purchased than ready. Yeah, I I am can't wait. I am still not, but I will be by the time it comes out. <laughs> you got all these things you want to buy. You want to buy yourself a new pro controller. You want yeah. to buy a Let's Go Eevee. You want to buy yourself a hardcover, yeah, hardcover guide. But you haven't even bought the damn game yet. Yeah, ex- exactly. I, I I've decided I do want that pro controller. <laughs> just watching a few um unboxing videos because mm-hmm. um a few of the uh, official. Uh, pictures just shows that that it's got like the white handles and the white logo. Yeah, but actually in person the the logo is silver with like a nice shiny finish. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that looks a bit nicer than I thought. You got my money there with you. Because I'm looking for an extra pro controller because I've got two docks. I've got one in the lounge room. Not 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 docks like the switch docks, but for the the controllers to charge charger docks. Yeah, yeah, charge docks. So I'm like, well, I might as well fill one up with an extra controller. <laughs> Just extra hundred dollars just to fill it. <laughs> You're just like, hey, look, I'm just gonna buy myself this really nice pro controller, and then I'm gonna sit it in the dock. So oh no, complete. well I'll use, I'll use it. No, nah, I just imagine like it's like, hey, this it's got like the white and silver on it, and it's like, oh, what happened to your pro controller? It's like, oh, it is a special edition Smash one, but it's got the white and silver handles. It's like, okay, don't you mean the whole thing's white and silver from all that dust you've. <laughs> collected <laughs> yeah. on it it's just grey from dust leaving it in no. the dock who knows because like I'll, I'll probably end up playing depends on what the situation is because a lot of the time I think I'm going to be playing with like GameCube controllers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah depends on where I am <laughs> like in the lounge room no, I've got it set up like in my like games room I've got it on a monitor so it's a lot closer and I've got the adapter already plugged in yeah in the lounge room unless you come over or something I don't think I'll be playing with a GameCube controller in there because the couch is a bit further back yeah yeah so and we uh, know your experience with wide controllers mm, yeah well on, on the Wii on Brawl I had the Wii standing up and pulled it over with the GameCube controller and it just bugged my disc yep and that led to a whole whole thing of getting the disc repaired and they buggered up the disc more but then they ended up replacing it that's a whole other story yep yep he had uh, three copies of Brawl yeah I did I don't know how you could uh, go through so many coffees. Yeah, well, what, what was my second one? Oh, yeah, my, I, I, we took it to the school for a tournament. Yeah, and, and Conrad and, buggered it. And someone ran through the GameCube controller and yanked the whole system off the yep. off the table. Lost your SD card that day in Brawl. Yeah, I did too, with all the Virtual Console games on there. Yep. Yeah. Ah, good times. <laughs> so, in other words, I shouldn't be using GameCube controllers at all. They've caused me a lot of stress. Yeah, well... <laughs> Especially with especially with the switch now, it's going to be really light to just like run through and yank, isn't it? Probably, yeah. Probably. That, that's why I've, that's why I've got my GameCube stuff set up at my desk. Yeah, I do want I do want I do want one of the the uh, I think the Power A wireless ones, but I'm not sure on their mm. quality. I did I did have a look at them. They look actually really cool, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. I'm like uh, if you guys haven't seen it, it's basically a GameCube controller. It's made by a Power A. It's wireless. It it isn't rechargeable. It doesn't have rumble. It's missing a few, fair few things, but it is a pretty much a replacement for the Pro Controller. Look, yeah. I'm interested. Well, to a degree. I mean, the the problem with it is, is I still think, don't think it has the full button configuration. It does. It, it does. does. And it has gyro as well. So it has a ZL, ZR, yep, 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 yep. left, right. Yep. It's got, it's got everything. It's just doesn't, okay. it doesn't have rumble and it's not rechargeable. It takes double A's. Oh, Okay. Yep. So if you can live with that, I was interested in having a go, but I think the pro controller is probably just with the rumble and everything. Good I think enough it was, as it is. Yeah. Well, you see, a lot of people, um, and this is actually something that uh, 
I'd seen online the other day, but there was actually a, like a whole bunch of people that um, replaced their right stick on a pro controller for a C stick. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. People have been modding it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't but, know. I don't know if that's necessarily what I'll miss from the game view controller. I think it's just like the big A button and the yeah, yeah, and the, like, yeah. Just, just the way that controller's made. It's ergon it organized for yeah for um smash in general yeah you know it's what, pretty much what that controller had in mind was hey look it's a smash brothers controller and that's why people still use it so that's as is mm. yes <laughs> <laughs> uh so have you we're talking earlier you haven't played anything this week you've been you've been sick with uh, salmonella <sighs> <laughs> yeah so i i I knocked off work and then I cooked up something uh, that was on on redu- reduced that had been in the freezer for like maybe half a week. <laughs> Defrosted it, cooked that, ate it. Two hours later, all of a sudden, I was just like, oh, I feel dizzy. And then I stood up and it all hit me. And then ever since that Monday night, I've, uh, I've been recovering from food poisoning. So... I didn't really feel like sitting down and pieing anything at all because my my head was just everywhere. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so I haven't really done much this I, week. I yeah, I had that a few well, like a month or so ago where I went out and had a dodgy chicken schnitzel and I woke up midnight just feeling awful and the day after I was just comatose, couldn't eat, just wanted to sleep all day. It's awful. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, no, it's definitely not fun at all. Yeah, I, I missed a couple of days of work because, of, like, as soon as I stood up, I just feel dizzy and I just need to sit down again. Mm. So, a lot of fun. Your computer is going nuts over there. It is, isn't it? It's all the notifications must be all my friends. Yeah, all I'm my, sh- all I'm sure my you friends. have a lot of them. <laughs> nah, they're just my pretend friends. I, I just I, pretends. I, I, <laughs> I've I've just got the media player set up to do notification sounds, so you think I'm popular. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon still. That's what I've still been playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm up to about 50 hours now, um, which is huge for like the amount of time I've been putting into games this year. Like I've been, yeah, yeah. Especially with, like on on if it was like a PlayStation game, I wouldn't be able to put that much time into it because I can't can't take it with me. A lot of this time has been just watching TV and searching for shinies and all that type of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, really enjoying the end game of Let's Go Pikachu so far. Um, I haven't done too much. I finished the Pokedex, got the uh, shiny charm, and I've been really hammering looking for shinies. Mm-hmm. I think I'm. What am I up to now? Um, is it six? You've got six from my memory. Uh, I've got six. Then, I ha- then there's a few I haven't put on Twitter, so I think I might be up to eight or nine now. Okay. Nine shinies. I just, just today I got a shiny Charizard. Um, but. Actually, I put this on Twitter, but I was looking. For, I've been looking for a shiny Porygon like all of yesterday, <laughs> looking for it, um, watching TV, and just doing going back and forth between the routes, waiting for it to pop up, and it finally did pop up, but I did not see it. I was watching TV, and when I looked back down, the sc- the screen was just blank, and as I turn around to go back into the door to reset the spawn rates, <laughs> the shiny Porygon's nose just pops out. <laughs> <laughs> watching watching the video that you oh, took of it yeah. is just hilarious because it, it it's <laughs> like it's it's it makes it makes your soul burn but at the same time you just like you walk out the porygon spawns and you can see it and then it yeah. walks back behind the door thing <laughs> yeah i know it, i didn't see any of that until i recorded the video went back and had a look Oh. I'm like, I went back, had a look, and it's just, it's just freely walking around, as obvious as anything. And not only that, it's the only Pokemon that spawned. Usually, there's about five or six. Yep. There's like you got you got Charizard, Dragonite up top. You got Pidgeot. You got Pidgey, Pidgeotto. You got Growlithe. Mm-hmm. This time, it was just Porygon, just the shiny Porygon. And I look down, and I just see nothing. I'm like, okay, I've done it literally probably a thousand times that day. Like you know, it's just yep. becomes that monotonous and. <laughs> Especially, especially you can see in the video, and its nose pokes out just as I'm going back in. Yeah. And as I did that, I went, <gasps> and I just threw myself back into the couch. I was sitting with my girlfriend watching TV at the time. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, Are you okay? And she's like, she thought I was in serious pain, and maybe not physical pain, but I was going through something. <laughs> I was, <laughs> my brain shut down a bit. I just, 
maybe you're starting to cry. Maybe you're... I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but today, I'm, I'm still dedicated to get that Porygon. I've always wanted a shiny Porygon, but obviously... He, he's going to do it, boy. Uh, yeah. Well, back in Fire Red Leaf Green, it was a, a 1 in 8,000 8, and something chance, and you had to keep resetting at the game uh, corner, which was not going to happen... Mm-hmm. In other Pokemon games, you haven't been able to find Porygon out in the wild. This is the, one of the first games you can actually find him. Yeah. I think you might have been able to get him in the wild in Diamond and Pearl. You could. But Diamond and Pearl was still one in eight thousand chance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can do the egg thing, but the Masuda method. But yeah. No, nah, absolutely loving it so far. Shiny hunting is a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, you can't complain too much about your luck. Yeah, no, I've had good luck so far. You've had like a exuberant amount of luck it's just that like you had that one spur a moment thing yeah no that, was, that wasn't that was a bad luck that was just a big fuck up on my behalf <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just so funny because you could see the process that went on like you weren't looking at the screen as you walked back in the Porygon popped up but then walked behind the building so you couldn't see it yeah and I looked down nothing you know just just it, yeah yeah you could see the whole process unravel in just that video without any any other... It would have been hilarious video um, having it if I had the face cam or something, if I was recording it with face cam <laughs> or a microphone. Or just... <gasps> I'm glad you got it when you did. I'm so glad you got it when you did. Like the video. No, I got the video, yeah. Because if not, then... God, I, I couldn't even imagine like how badly that went down. Mm. <laughs> that's awful. Uh, well, I will find it eventually. I've uh, got it booted up at the moment. I'm still on that route. Because mm-hmm. like, now that I've seen it, I can't just be like, I'm never going to get one. I've got to get one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen it. And I hope it happens this week because... Smash. Because I'll have to boot up Smash and that's going to reset my chain. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, the shiny hunting, you've got to try and get to a 31, but that's got your maximum chance of getting a, a shiny. But if you restart or turn off the game that resets your chain so yep. so I actually had a few indie games yesterday I'm like oh I've got to try and dabble in some of them but oh, I can't I, until I get the shiny and I <laughs> reset my chain uh, but Bryce I think that might lead into our first story of the uh, episode okay so Masuda uh, reiterates Pokemon Let's Go are core titles with future entries that could work with Pokemon Go um, a lot of people are saying these games are spin-off games whether it's Twitch streamers or podcasters reviewers or whatnot mm-hmm. and every time they say that i'm like Ugh, it's not a spin-off game it's not mystery dungeon it's not like one of these games it is a core game yeah um i could see where they're coming from though yeah yeah like my 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 thing with let's go is that um the core experience it's got it's got a lot in terms of the way of core experience of pokemon in terms of my like, uh evs and stuff mm. you know that's all in there, but um, it's broken. <laughs> like, you could just have, like, a 500 speed stat right on for all you care. Yeah, that's like, beautiful. It, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's broken as hell, so... Especially when you're doing so many of these catch combos. I had it... Um, I forgot. It was, it was the HP candy, whatever whatever you call that. I think it's, I think it's called the health candy. Mm-hmm. And I had 9999 of them, so I couldn't get any more. I'm like, oh, well, I might as well feed them to my Arcanine. So go through 100 candies and he's level 70 at the moment and he's got 300 HP yep. by the time I finished I'm like I can keep going <laughs> I can keep going yep I'm like, oh my god <laughs> so yeah yeah no well Why anyway not? um in in that value it's it's a core Pokemon game but it's not a competitive core Pokemon game mm. I think that's the way we have to establish it Mm. I think it has more merit that people are, um, than people are giving it though because I was watching some YouTube videos of people battling and while while you're not um, catering for abilities and hold items it's still like a fair bit of a like strategy to it like it's still still Pokemon type matching and when to switch in and out and what moves to use and yeah but you've also got to got to keep in mind that weather effects are also not in the game mm, yeah and stuff like that and it's it's just the way I see Let's Go is that it's a core Pokemon experience, but it's not the definitive definition of a core Pokemon game. No, no, definitely not. So, no. like, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but I'm happy. I'm happy for them to do this like every second iteration, like a Let's Go game. Mm. I would love to see whatever they're going to do. Like, if they do one for Johto, 
yeah i, w- I would like that i'd love to I, see a johto one too i love i love the johto games johto games are great but um the uh you know the core the actual core pokemon games um you know they're kind of import- important to pokemon's growth mm. in my opinion like yeah. there's so much um there's so much community in com- in the competitive side of pokemon uh, whether it's even even if it's just in pokemon go gym battles yeah like if something as stupid as simple as that um pokemon has a massive competitive nature and i feel like that there's too much of a player base at this point that has this the mathematician side to them that's just like i want a more fleshed out pokemon experience to be competitive with so you know mm. you can't really just take out like all these things that make that competitive and then just be like hey it's a core pokemon game then this is what we're doing from now on sort of thing it doesn't really no. work like that yeah well he he never they never said that it's what they're doing from now on so we're pretty sa- safe in that behalf but oh no no yeah. 100% safe i think if they uh, in my opinion uh if if this became what they were trying to do with pokemon you know how like with sun and moon they just made everything really simple and hand holdy and all that yeah i have a feeling like that's where this was sort of it like let's go is sort of where it was heading yeah i think yeah. i think the other set of games needs to dial it back and not be so hand holdy and yeah well like i said in the uh review discussion i hope these games mean that next year's games are going to be like all right we don't have to worry about dumbing down stuff and this is like a proper rpg which fans have been playing for years and just yeah. caters to them yeah exactly yeah, yeah. The, the actual the actual quote from masuda is uh these games aren't spin-offs they are core pokemon titles as for whether we would make other games mm. that could connect to pokemon go that would depend on how the games are received if we hear a lot of people saying that they enjoyed being able to bring pokemon from these games from pokemon go then we'll think about maybe having future titles would be able to connect to it so he's actually talking he's talking about the actual functionality of Pokemon Go as well um, in, in the core games next year would you like to see Pokemon Go integration be able to bring your Pokemon from that or I don't know it's not really a big deal at all I don't think it's not but I think I think like with all things that they sort of make a gimmick with Pokemon games they're, they're eventually going to die out do you know what I'm saying yeah like like with Pokemon Go I, I um, connected it and I, I did it because I needed a pincer and a couple of Pokemon to complete my Pokedex and I had them on go. So I just brought them over and caught them in the go park and that was pretty much it for me as far as functionality. Yeah. I don't think that'll I don't think that's a bad thing for the next Pokemon games. No. I yeah. don't think having a having a bloody a Psyduck in your bloody uh Pokemon Go that you want to bring over like just for Pokedex values is yeah. that bad a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess not, but it's my issue. My issue with it in general is just you think of like the Dream World and stuff like that, all that stuff that came in for black and white. Um, or there's another thing I'm thinking of. Beats me. Beats me at the moment. But there was like a bunch of online capable things attached to Pokemon that you could you know go and find pokemon with special abilities and all that stuff to bring yeah them oh over. yeah the dream world and stuff yeah is that what something there's, along those lines there's yeah. a dream world and there was another one as well but i can't remember exactly what that was mm. i didn't get into that to be honest in black <clears throat> and white i didn't ever it was pretty it. good yeah yeah it's pretty cool it was, it was a good way to get hidden ability pokemon yeah that, that was back in the day when it was hard to connect your ds to the online yeah that's why i didn't do it so much yeah exactly because yeah. i had really cool integration with the Pokemon website, I remember. Yeah, yeah. You put your Pokemon up into the cloud and you could use that to, um, yeah, yeah, search for Pokemon. And that was really neat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there was a lot, there was a lot in that census that, you know, was, was a really good idea and prospect, but then, you know, as time went on, they were just like, nah, it's not worth keeping open sort of thing. Hmm. And I know that Pokemon Go is not going to die out as quickly as something like that, but in the future if people ever want to go back and play these games how much are they going to lock behind it before they're like you know if you want to go back and play these games say like if they do this do this next mm. year yeah give it give it 
10 to 20 years pokemon <laughs> yeah. go is dead it's been long dead yeah probably yeah and then what if it what if it's just like hey uh there was pokemon you could only exclusively pull over to pokemon from pokemon go in order to get them well mel metal in this game for example yeah exactly yeah yeah so i still haven't got him i haven't even thought no. about trying to get him well i can't find him <laughs> oh you've got it you've got to um there's like I forgot what the actual name is but you transfer Pokemon over it gives you access in Pokemon Go to like a, a crate and you can activate that and every I think once a week for half an hour you pretty much it's pretty much a lure and it brings in Mel Metal and you can, okay. you can catch them for half an hour but that makes getting uh, Meltan Mel, wait sorry I'm confused now is Meltan the little one or the big one Meltan Meltan so you one. can catch Meltan yeah so you've only got half an hour each week to catch them. Yep. And you've got to get four hundred candy. <laughs> so if you're doing if if you're really anal about it and you're getting your Pokemon each week, it's gonna take you about two months. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I haven't even bothered to catch one. No, no I haven't either. I will, I'll be honest with you, I I was expecting a little something something a little less tedious out of that announcement when they were when it came in the trailer. Like maybe we were the, they were going to put Zero Aura or something like that Pokemon that mm. you know we aren't getting in Australia right now. Um, Apparently, you can people have worked out that you can like contact something along the lines of like customer service and they can sort of help you out and they can get you a code. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, but via traditional way is yeah, what I'm saying. Going to EB Games or and be like, hey, yeah. I want a code. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So, um, I, like, I thought that it was just going to be something like that coming in or whatever, not this, hey, look, we've introduced a Pokemon in Pokemon Go, and it's going to be in the games now. And I don't know, like, I've I've always been iffy about Mel Metal and Meltan. Mm. Like, I don't I don't know how to feel about them, the design, or anything like that. You know, I've come I've come around now that the official art's out there, and you can actually see what it is. It's not just like a. I guess, but like a meh looking like on, on in Pokemon Go, it looked a bit underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it look it looks it looks fine. It looks cool enough. Yeah, I, I just don't. You know, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go exclusivity. Mm. That bugs me. <laughs> That's really annoying. Yeah, like I, I I'd be all about Pokemon Go, but living in a small town, there's where, nothing here. Yeah, where it's really hard to play, and even even I'm not in town anyway. I'm going out to the farm each day. Yeah, where there's nothing. Where there's literally nothing. I, I think I took, like, a, maybe a year or so ago, I took a screenshot of out the farm playing Pokemon Go. I found, I found a little bit of reception <laughs> and I logged that into Pokemon Go and it's just nothing. Yeah. And you think with nothing, there'll be Pokemon there. We're out in the wilderness. Might be a secret grass gym or something. No? Yeah. No. <laughs> just uh, just n- near where the farm is, there's like a... It's not. I wouldn't call it a town, but it's like a little area. It's got like a couple of houses, and there's a club there, like a like a community club and that there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a gym there and just no one knows about it? Find a secret gym in Pokemon Go, which no one's actually going to. Yeah. And you can just put Pokemon there and just leave them there for uh, forever and get free currency. Ooh. Beautiful. But no, they put it. They put them all in the cities and. Yeah, that's that's the most infuriating thing. Like people are just like, "Oh, be careful with your Pokemon Go," like going out in the city and walking around late at night and getting robbed and <laughs> like all this stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, that's fair enough. That's just that's just good advice in general. Don't go out late at night and get robbed. Sh- yeah, well, you shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. But I, there's no, there's no real sense of adventure in that for me. It's just like, hey, who can pay the most money to be a Pokestop? Or yeah, who who wants to buy the lures today? <laughs> who wants to pay to be a gym so people come to your Starbucks every two minutes? Can you do that? Pay to be a gym? Well, that's you know a lot of places are getting are paying for that. Well, they especially back in the day they were paying for that. Oh, really? We're like, oh, that, we want to we want to be a gym because it it brings in customers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I just remember seeing all the restaurants being like, we don't want you. Go away, because people are just like crowding around like these fancy restaurants or whatever. Actually, actually you know what? What? I said to Dylan <laughs> last week on the show that there was something that changed that just absolutely pissed me off and made me not want to play the game. What was that? That's it, Dylan. If you're listening, it was them <laughs> changing it so that all the Pokemon stick to fucking Poker Stops. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was listening to this. I was listening to it last week as well. What? What really annoyed? There was like a 
a third party mapping system where you could be like, oh, you can like track down Pokemon. Oh yeah, like and made they, it a real communal thing. And they and they got rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we could be like, oh, there's a Volpix on the other side of town. We go to the other side of town, we catch it. Whereas they got rid of that because they banned like all third party mapping systems. Yes. Yeah. 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 So like any community that you had, like we there were map pages and stuff like that, uh, just so people could report that they'd seen a Pokemon here or something like that yeah. and they shut down even them yeah yeah and then they changed the system because they were like oh this is not good or whatever and they made it so Pokemon stuck to Pokestops which which we don't have any of <laughs> how many do we have in town we've got like the, that's the that's the problem we have we've one t- one half of town is it, has... ten, is it ten max oh Here? at least like... ten max and they're all on one side of town yeah like the, yeah, they are too. The side of town I live down, there's zero. There's but none. There's one crossroads with maybe three, like three on each corner. Literally. Then like there's maybe one at a there's what there's one at a school. Then there's one at the skate park. Like there's not many. Like and they're all spread out, so you can't be. There's one at the church on the yeah. like other end of town for and whatever reason. You can't even go on like a reasonable walk to get them. It's not like... Oh, no. I'm, I'm, you can't even do like a lap around town. You've got to like do a zigzag and sort of... Yeah, it's tough in there. Yeah, I'll... I'll like, I'll, seriously, I'll be all about Pokemon Go if if they'll be like, all right, these small towns, we, we'll just fill them up. Because you go to... Like, if you go to like the park in Sydney, they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, so why can't you just put them everywhere in a, t- in a small town if you can so do So you've got it, a little you know? walk of stepping stones in the park. It's just like stepping stone number one, stepping stone number <laughs> two, stepping stone number three. <laughs> It's like in the town we've got to, it's only um, there's only one set of traffic lights, so you could do like the traffic lights. <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's just like, I I loved I loved the like go like going to the middle of nowhere or something like that and being like, oh look here's Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, that's that cool. That was good, and I mean like that was that wasn't uh, pertained to everywhere. It'd still be within the townscape because like again, if you go out into like farming country, there's gonna be fucking nothing there. Literally, yeah, but. Like at, at least I could like walk down the road and be like, oh hey, look, I found a Pokemon. There's not a Poke Stop in sight because I don't live near any. Mm. And then just be like, oh, that's cool. There used to be a spawn point out front of my mum's house. Yeah, and I used to like, I'd get, I'd get to mum's. Um, I before I get out the car, I'd open up my Pokemon Go, and there'd be three or four Pokemon waiting there for me to just throw balls at. Cool, mm. great, awesome. But that's that's been taken away now because I stuck it all to Poke Stops, and then. It just made it made a game of who could sit at the poker stop the longest. Not me. <laughs> I'm not going to sit on the crossroads. No. Uh, we did do that though. We did park. We did do that for some time. <laughs> we yeah. parked our car at the crossroads and activated all <clears throat> three at once. Yeah. Uh, those were good times though, that playing Pokemon Go. That was a lot of fun. It was, but especially in our town, like the town just become like it's usually just dead at night time, but the town come alive at night time with cars going around and everything playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. It was it was it, it was amazing, like honestly. It was. But then they ruined it. <laughs> they ruined it. They ruined it. They ruined it. Especially with the map thing, because we used to like everybody in town used to communicate, mm. you know. But no, nope. unfortunately. Yes. Now, Bryce, would it surprise you that Pokemon Go has been selling well in Japan? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. No, not. absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, so I this is from this story is from my Nintendo News and it's from uh, November twenty eighth. So I'm not sure if it's a bit dated at the moment. It's a little bit dated, four days. Yeah. So when this episode comes out, I don't know if it's going to be like a new story where it's gone like ten billion copies sold. Not sure. <laughs> but at at the moment, it's number one number one selling game in Japan, selling uh, one hundred and sixty two thousand copies. Oof. Between both versions. And it's actually kind of weird because number two is Battlefield Five on PlayStation Four, so that's kind of a weird <laughs> Japanese game for number two, isn't it? <laughs> that is surprising, actually, because yeah, like... I'm pretty sure that game's not selling anywhere, any any well anywhere else in the world. Yeah, pretty sure it's actually selling really badly. Yeah, I heard that too. I haven't seen anything on it, but yeah, so no surprise there. Pokemon selling well in Japan. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So. Whether, whether by the time you're listening to this and 
that sold more there you go but it's selling well yeah well that's what matters that's what matters mm. and I'm about, about to buy my EV copy so I've uh, I've contributed to two copies bad person <laughs> <laughs> got a, you got a fun game freak I'm sure they're really hurting for money at the moment oh yeah just absolutely. for the last bit of Pokemon news gotta open up a Patreon sorry <laughs> open up a Patreon for game freak <laughs> so hey guys uh, if you support us at the $1 level we'll uh, give you a Pikachu plush yay they're probably losing money off that Pikachu plush for a dollar I think so <laughs> especially with shipping um, but yeah, the last bit of Pokemon news for the episode is uh, that the Let's Go soundtrack is now av- available on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking about buying it. It's, I think it's $17 Australian. I'm like, oh, nah. But it, so, I'm like, nah. But I was just listening to like the previews on iTunes and it's got all the music from Let's Go. It's also got all the music from Pokemon Yellow mm-hmm. version, the original mm-hmm. music. No, oh, that's good. Oh, that's really neat. It's really cool. I absolutely love the music in these new games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I really enjoy like the the drums. You can sort of hear the drums more distinctly. Yes, yeah. Especially yes. like in the battle theme and that. Mm-hmm. It's got like the doom doom. doom, doom, doom. Like, yeah, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. Perfect I love, rendition. I love nothing more than Pokemon music. You reckon? I mean, my family, things, <laughs> yeah, things like that. But love Pokemon music. It's probably by far one of my like favorite gaming music. Yeah, well, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can agree to that. Uh, next up, Bryce, I think you'll be able to have a bit more import in this one. Sure. Uh, so, two things. Mm-hmm. Probably worth mentioning in this because it covers two things. Um, first off uh, is Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Spirit uh, for Mithra in Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. Uh, got censored with a big old uh, quotation marks. Um, where she, they sort of they she's s- got black tights on now she's got black tights on they covered up her chest yep yep so um, they didn't do it to Pyra for whatever reason I, I presume because she's also covered up mm. but um, they uh, basically just made it so it's a little less risque for the Smash Bros spirit and a lot of people were really confused they're kind of just like well why like to be completely honest with you why I'm sure I'm sure people don't mind that much. You know, Bayonetta's in the game. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, so what's what's the deal? Uh, it's not a trophy, so can't uh, do anything bad like you used to be able to God in Smash it, Brothers. N- Nintendo, you bastards bloody covering up my JPEGs. <laughs> I want to say those JPEG legs. <laughs> um, but uh, a few days later, a bit of a response came out for that and they said that... Um, the, there's actually a costume for Mithra featuring that clothing being introduced into mm. uh, Chronicles 2 and the Tournament of the Golden Country. So now she has that costume where she's covered up and has tights on and whatever. Yeah. And, like, I'm not saying the design is bad. It was just really confusing. Yeah. Like, at the time. Do you, do, you, do you know or do you think that this was introduced, like, like the new costume in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was introduced because of Smash Bros? Smash Bros wanted to censor it, so they... They then put it into Xenoblade as well. Oh, I mean, I see. Or do you think they were censoring it in the game beforehand? <laughs> no, no, no way. Yeah, because they're, they're doing some pretty risque stuff in there anyway. I don't think they. <laughs> they got swimsuits and everything. Yeah, like for for the characters. I don't. I, I think that I think what's happened is that people covered it, covered it up, and they saw that you know. Oh well, they they must have been in talks, just being like, "How can you cover up this design a bit for Smash Bros?" And they were like, "Ah." Oh, all right, so they did it, and then they've just Put gone some clothes on. They were just like, <laughs> well, then they were just like, uh, you know what, kind of works. Probably look as a, look good as a costume, and you know what, it does, it does. It doesn't like take away from the character or anything like that. I just think it was really confusing that this was all for the like for the sake of a JPEG. Mm. And much. like ha- half of the people won't notice anyway, apart from people who play Xenoblade Chronicles. <coughs> well, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people unlock it and go, oh, cool. Uh, it's sword lady. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sword lady from Xenoblade. Oh. Oh. Um, so there was that. And then there was also another spirit news in terms of uh, Pokemon. Oh, well, I lied. It wasn't the last Pokemon story. <laughs> it wasn't. No. But while we're talking about spirits, we might as well mention it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
if you have a save file from Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, you will immediately be eligible in Smash to receive a partner Pikachu spirit or a partner Eevee spirit. Yeah. So you'll get that when you launch the game and the game reads that you have Pokemon save data and you'll get it based on whatever version you've got or if you've got both or if you've got none of them. Yeah, so that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, free spirit's free spirit, right? Yeah, and you'll be able to unlock either one. Like, you'll be, un- be able to unlock them whether you've got the game or not. Just Yeah. You just get given them if you have the game so far. Yeah, it's just a, just a nice little touch, I guess. Yeah. Supporting, supporting Nintendo twice in less than a month. <laughs> yeah. With a free JPEG. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the JPEG, Nintendo. We thanks, thanks really, Nintendo. really appreciate. It. I love JPEGs. Yeah, I, lo- I love them, Nintendo. I like. I guess they're more of a PNG, really. Like they got transparent backgrounds. So oh, true. Everyone's calling them JPEGs, but they're not really. No, they're PNGs. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. No, well, we have to correct everyone. If if you listen to any other podcast and you hear them t- bagging out spirits mode saying it's just jpegs no 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 no. we're getting pngs like they, they take up a bit more room right guys so yeah don't... yeah they're a little more high quality yeah yeah had to do a bit of background layering and that to get them don't don't dismiss it <laughs> <laughs> the pngs god damn it anyway anyway uh let's talk a bit a little, a little bit smash all right i don't really have anything on the agenda to talk about smash but i'm sure we'll use, be able to talk about something use that to cap off the episode then yeah yeah pretty much yeah yeah it's a bit, a bit of a slow week considering we're waiting for this damn game mm. to come out. I'm just waiting for Smash and Shiny hunting Porygons. That's what's going on. I, I think, look, I think the major problem for me is that the leak has happened now. And ever since that leak has happened, uh, it's it's sort of gone down to a whole lot of... Uh, a whole lot of try not to trip over the spoiler. Yeah. And, like, I'm really mad because a bunch of... Dis- well, it wasn't a bunch, I suppose, but maybe a couple of disgruntled, uh, disgruntled people who were peeved off about ROM sites and fan projects being taken down and all that uh, decided to upload a copy of the Smash Bros. ROM, hmm. um, which in turn is meaning that people can go and illegally download that and play that on hack switches and stuff like that. And Yeah, yeah. It's it's just awful. Yeah, so I, I wasn't able to talk about this week because I wasn't here, but... Yeah, no, just... It, su- it sucks for a lot of reasons. Obviously, the spoiler situation with people like us, people like you who you know don't want the game spoiled. I don't think there's a lot to spoil apart from maybe what happens in some of the cutscenes in the story mode. No, there's not, a, there's not a shit ton to be spoiled, but I think it's like... So if we waited this long, I don't want to know, guys. Sakurai already had this problem when people were sharing around cutscenes from freaking Brawl. Well, that's exactly the reason why he didn't want to make the story mode in the first place. Exactly. Because the payoff of playing playing through Brawls was getting the cutscenes. People just put those on YouTube anyway. And he yeah. had a huge problem with that. As like a lot of game developers do, they hate seeing the yeah, game. Yeah, they hate, they hate, yeah. Just uploaded them, people just watch it and don't buy the game. But like, People, people like us who are like, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to like build a podcast. We're trying to maybe get access to some of these games earlier. And people like this just ruin it for everyone. They do. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, YouTubers or content creators, it's just, yeah, it's a shame. Well, you know, people have been getting their hands on the game and labbing their favorite characters and all that bullshit and, you know... A lot of people are too afraid to say, oh, I've played it, because at the moment Nintendo would be looking at Twitter with the eyes of a hawk. Yeah. I've only seen... The only thing I've seen from the leaks is just someone on Twitter being like, hey, I'm testing out the characters, and they were testing out Peach and just doing analysis of Peach as a character. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Jesus, you're, you're, you're game posting anything. Just... If, if, if you've pirated the game, just play it. Put your Switch offline. <laughs> And don't talk about it, for the love of God. Yeah, exactly. Like, people are saying like their Switch has got bricked. I'm like, why the hell do you still have your Switch still online? Yeah. Like, it's, it's just dumb. People are just silly. Mm. But you know what? Um, at, the sa- at, the, at the same time, guys, can we come up to your house <laughs> <laughs> and play some Smash with you? If you pirated it, if you pirated it, uh, 
and you are not intending on buying a copy because you've pirated it, then you deserve it. Mm. Um, you shouldn't have pirated it in the first pl- first place, but if at least if you're going to pirate the damn thing, at least pay for it. Yeah. Look, a lot of people, a lot of people, again disgruntled with Nintendo about all their their thing with the ROM sites and the fan projects and all that. It's also going to drive people to download this and just be like, haha, screw you. But mm. this is not... Yeah, the thing you got to think about is that this... It's not Nintendo that suffers from this mainly. It's Sakurai. Well, it's just it's just a team of um, developers that worked on it. It's just like, if you, if you work on something and, you know, it gets leaked to people just downloading it, it's it, just a huge slap in the face of those people who put their heart and soul into making it. It is, but like I just look at I just look at everything that's fucking gone wrong with Sakurai in the past like f- five odd years. Yeah, he's just like just really busting his ass to make. He's really this. busting his ass. Mm. He's like not spending any time with his family, and he's injuring his hands and mm. all this shit. And then people are just like, "Ha ha, screw you, Nintendo!" And then Sakurai's just like, "Oh, it's okay." So Nintendo's fine, guys. They're not gonna. He's sad, Hoshi. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, Nintendo's gonna be fine if people are pirating Smash Bros. to an extent. Obviously, if everyone's doing it, <laughs> well, half the people are doing it. That's obviously no good. But I think yeah, the main concern is just the developers on the game. Exactly. We're making it. Yeah. It's just it's just shocking. Just don't do it. Like it would be it would be interesting to see where it come from. Like whether it come from an outlet or whether it come from maybe someone in the factory or a YouTuber like it could it could have been any anyone along the like the chain of people that are responsible for the, the game coming to life well the the game was initially leaked in Mexico mm. through a mum and dad game store all right did they get it that early yep wow Sac- I'd imagine Sakurai was more pissed off about Nintendo sending out copies so damn early. Mm, yeah, because uh, there's a story about Red Dead Redemption that uh, re- only a certain amount of retailers were getting it on launch day. Mum and pop yep. shops weren't getting it beforehand because I assume of this very situation that they did. Rockstar didn't want the game yeah, getting sold leaked. early. Yeah, yeah, that's that's huge though. That they would have had it like a month early. The game. Yep, something like that. Wow. They had it for a really, really, really long time early. Yeah, because I, I know, like all that, like with Nintendo's marketing at the moment, they're uh, in Melbourne and a few cities around Australia. They're actually allowing people to play the game this weekend, and right? They, and they've been doing it the past few weekends. So the game is it went obviously went gold a while ago, but the game's ready and it's been going out to reviewers and critics and all sorts of people like a few weeks ago now. So yeah, yeah. So you just have, yeah. It's a, yeah, but it sucks. <laughs> it's yeah. it's going to suck too because like w- with Red Dead Redemption, people were writing in saying, you know, well, I'm going to lose, like the owners of these stores, we're going to lose thousands of dollars having not having the biggest game of the year available to sell on launch day. Yeah, exactly. And people who do this, like, you know, the record for everyone, YouTubers, stores, the players, nothing good comes out of it. No. It's it's getting to the point where people where companies aren't trusting like people on the internet at all. Yeah. And I mean the internet's becoming a massive way in how we communicate and mm. do all that stuff. So Yeah, the the internet's picking up two thousand eighteen, isn't it? <laughs> it? Wasn't much last year, but <laughs> yeah. Um the other issue was as well is that um, there's also a Switch emulator running about which means that even if they don't have a Switch they might suit enough they might be able to play it mm. um, without even owning the proprietary hardware because they've had uh, Pokemon Let's Go running on uh, emulator mm. <laughs> which at the, yeah at the moment really poorly but yeah, I'll, I'll bay it yeah but it's running at more yeah. like it could run at 200 times speed in perfect frames uh, it's just not controllable. You can't cap it. Yeah. So sometimes it'll run at like 200% speed for no reason, but that's because the emulator hasn't found a way to cap it at a particular mm. particular level yet. So just like thinking of it from that prospect, it's just, yeah. It just makes me worry about the future of future games that have come out. 
Mm. I don't think, I don't even think that's the biggest worry. I think the biggest worry is just how hacked the Switch is <laughs> without, you know, an emulator. You can just get a Switch and do what you got to do to it and she's ready to go. I guess. And Nintendo can't patch it. That's the biggest issue mm. at the moment. Yeah, but you could say the same thing that's been happening for years in general with chip like chipping consoles and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, but it wasn't as quick as what happened to the Switch. Oh, this no. happened last year and it only came out last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's per- like perfectly done and it can't be overwritten. Yeah, and all you need is a paperclip. It's it's yeah. silly. Like I why why is the Joy-Con I don't understand <laughs> how the Joy-Con is the reason for be- people it, being able to hijack. It, it it what it does is it shorts out the switch in the home menu so when it reboots it reboots it into like the the like the backup mode and then you can hack it from there. That's what it does. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm. odd it's interesting like how it works it's just like a it's an unfortunate situation with just how the the Joy-Con connects and the, the software yeah right. and, and what what the processor is it's just a <laughs> it's just a whole hullabaloo yeah yeah so ne- next weekend Bryce we're going to be getting on getting on the beers getting on the drinks mm-hmm. playing some Smash Bros uh what are some of you, what are some of the characters you're looking forward to playing as all of them? Are you going to go straight until you're just going to like play all of the characters, or are you going to try and get used to a couple? Well, from what I understand, um, you unlock one character every ten minutes of play. That's how it works, does it? Well, so there's there's a, there's a quick shotgun way to unlock them, um, which I've read about. Um, <laughs> looking into the leaks. <laughs> Well, no, I haven't looked that far. It was just sort of something that come up, and uh, but it's it's as simple as like playing a quick match, resetting the game, uh, playing a quick match, getting the character to pop up, getting unlocking that character, resetting the game, playing a quick match, doing that over and over again. Right. So, um, essentially, every time you launch the game and finish a match, you will get a character pop up. Mm. Um, otherwise, it's a ten-minute cooldown for every character that comes along. Yeah. So what I'll probably spend my time doing Thursday night, Friday is just unlocking everyone in in multiplayer. Thursday night. Well, Thursday night when it comes out, midnight. I'm oh, midnight, right? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll probably just spend that and Friday because I've got the I've got the Friday off, unlocking everything in that. Maybe playing some spirits mode and then play a little bit of stock matches with the computers getting those PNGs yeah getting those PNGs <laughs> and um, yeah just sort of making sure that I've got every character unlocked so I can stuff around with it mm. you know um, we'll obviously be playing on the TV here on Saturday but you know come come whenever I want to play it at home I just like to have everything unlocked and good to go And yeah I'm really cu- curious to see um, feel it being played in handheld mode because I'm thinking about the GameCube controller I'm thinking about the Pro controller on the TV but I'm not really thinking much about the handheld mode yet I'm I think sure. it'll be fine in yeah, handheld yeah I think it'll be good I don't think there would be anything wrong with it surely we've been, I mean, playing, we've been playing on a 3DS for a while when, yeah. that, when that game was out so yeah, exactly. I'm sure we'll be able to play well on the Switch yeah, yeah I'm sure it'll be fine it's a bit like Pokemon I, I've only been playing it on, on handheld and catching Pokemon with the gyroscope and all that and when I put it onto the TV, I only put it onto the TV today after maybe two weeks or how, how long it's been since I've been playing on the TV. Right. And with the motion controls, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Just can't throw the friggin' things. I have no trouble with when, them. When my shiny Charizard come up, I'm like, oh. I slipped it out the dock, <laughs> changed the controls over and did it that way and put it back in. <laughs> Especially when you really don't want to lose it. I'm like, oh, I'm not losing this because of the stupid motion controls. <laughs> It's not that bad. No, I'm sure it's not that bad, but... You whingy Gerald. I, th- I threw a ball, goes straight straight ahead, throw another one, goes pew, off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Mm. Yeah, man. Smash. Yeah. I'm really, <laughs> yeah. I'm really, I'm like, I'm sitting in anticipation for it, but at the same time, I'm just like, I know that I can't be too excited because I've still got a couple of days to go, and if I get too excited, I get itchy about it. <laughs> you get a rash I get a rash I'm like smash <laughs> smash rash oh yes exactly 100% so yeah I'm just sort of trying to keep my cool uh, 
I've I've got a I've got a little list in my head of everything that I want to do, but I'm I won't get I won't get around and get it all done by the end of the weekend or anything like that. So I'm sort of just waiting for Friday so I can uh, unlock all my characters, then waiting for Saturday so I can uh, drink. Mm, looking forward to it. Drink and smash. It's been a really weird year, actually, when you think about it. Like we haven't had like m- m- I'm only talking for myself and maybe yourself here, but. Mm-hmm. There hasn't been any like really big, exciting Nintendo games out, yeah. All year, like there's been like, maybe a, some smaller titles. There's been Wii U ports, and now like we've just got Pokemon. Now we're just now we're rolling into Smash. It's all just all at the end of the year. Oh yeah, yeah. Like all all our all our big talking points for the year were Smash Directs, Pokemon being announced, E3, and all these things. But we haven't actually had like like big titles out that we've been really excited for. Mm-hmm. Whereas the year before, we've been talking about Zelda, obviously, Splatoon. Like, last year was phenomenal. I didn't expect that year to be repeated this year. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, last yeah. hopefully next year, like, we'll have a lot more games to talk about throughout the year. Maybe. R- rather Maybe. than... <laughs> we'll see. It seems not too bad so far with Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, hopefully Metroid Prime 4. Yep, um, Bayonetta 3, yeah, potentially. Yeah, Bayonetta 3. Yeah, potentially. So, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll never know until it hits. I'm actually hoping for like a a Zelda game to be re- remastered for Switch next year too. Me too, but it better not be Skyward Sword. Yeah. So actually, that that was a story that that got debunked, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. So um, that actually came out just after the recording of last week's episode. It did, <laughs> yeah. yeah it did. I saw you saying "damn it" on Twitter. Yeah. So um, during one of the during one of the music concerts, um, uh, Al Numa dropped a hint that Skyward Sword would be coming to Switch, but then it got debunked because people just jumped to the gun mm. and just thought, "Oh, this must mean this," and they're like, uh, "No." Well, they said at this time we have no plans to re- release the Legend of Zelda: Skull Sword on Nintendo Switch. But like, just because they say this doesn't mean anything. Like, remember earlier, maybe earlier this year, when uh, Dark Souls was hinted being ported to Switch, mm-hmm. and they're like, "No, no, no." Then later in the year, hey, Dark Souls is coming to Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of those situations. Like, I mean, this probably will pop up eventually on Switch. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't really want it to. Mm. I was thinking about it. Like, there's. I, I absolutely loved the story and there were sections in the game I absolutely loved but I got no desire to play the game again no like thinking back to you play through the dungeon and you've got to do the trial mm-hmm. I'll, like, I'll, I'll, what about that entire section <sighs> where you have no weapons or anything and you have to climb up Death Mountain no that was uh, it's beautiful that was one of the trials wasn't it I think so. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't stand the trials. Like, like you did the first one, you're like, oh yeah, got to be a bit. Actually, skillful. no, it wasn't one of the trials. So it was another one on top. Oh, of the I know trials. what you're thinking about now. Yeah, but just like the trials, you do the first one, you're like, all right, this is cool. Got to be a bit stealthy. Losing, I lost all my stuff. That's all right. Do another dungeon. Hey, got a trial for you. It's like, oh, again. All right. <laughs> Next one. Oh, got a trial for you. Do the same thing again. Oh, this is especially. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> do another dungeon. Hey. Got a trial for you. It's like, <laughs> my God. <laughs> this is fucking off. It, then it's like, hey, got a trial for you. Now, this, this, is, this is my favorite part of the game. I'm being sarcastic. Like, <laughs> the forest floods with water. You've got to get all the musical notes all in a row. If you don't, if you miss one, you got to start again. You've got to use the motion controls to, to control Link swimming. You've also got to boost by shaking the Wiimote. <laughs> while using that Wiimote to control your movement so <laughs> what have you thought of this I, I had no problem with the controls like the sort of controls I thought they were fine but just that bit broke me I'm like what have you thought of this Miyamoto <laughs> Shake, sh- like shaking by the shoulders like this is, this is Miyamoto <laughs> <laughs> there's only one thing I've seen in, sa- in uh, of S- Skyward Sword since I finished it that I found satisfying and that was um, seeing a glitch that was <laughs> seeing a glitch and that was hang on yeah yeah, satisfying, yeah, yeah yeah it was it was satisfying because um somebody was trying to replicate it in a speed run um and it's a really hard glitch to do and it basically made it so on your travel to the first temple in Farron Woods mm. you 
uh, have an enemy hit you and die at the same time or something and it sends Link flying and like cuts out half that entire section mm, I do remember that yeah coming up at the time yeah yeah that's like the only thing that's the only satisfying thing I've seen since at finishing Skyward Sword which mm. was beating Demise and being like yay <laughs> Yeah, I'm done with it. I don't have to do it anymore. Mm. It, I remember at the time too. IGN gave it a ten out of ten. Oof. Rich George and then Gamespot um, gave it a seven. Yep. And I remember at the time being like, "How?" Did, I'm like, "How did you give it a seven when like all these other things, uh, other outlets are giving it nines and tens?" And Gamespot's like just calling it good. And at the time, like, you know, what the hell, Gamespot? You play the game, you're like, oh, Gamespot had the more accurate review. Yeah, Skull Sword is not a 10 out of 10. It is absolutely not a 10 not out a of 10. Not a 10 out of 10. No. Not a 10 out of 10. It's really hard to compare Skyward Sword to like any other Zelda game in existence and be like, that was fantastic. And I like, that's CDI and everything aside because we all know that's... Yeah, it's, ass- not, it's, it's not Nintendo, yeah. It doesn't matter. Ask garbage, but yeah. Ask garbage. I love that term you use. Ask garbage. Um, but like... It just it tried to take so many things from different Zelda games that was supposed to be good, but did them worse. You know, I loved the story. I loved the lore behind it. The lore of the story was fine. I thought it was great, like finding out like like this is the. I first... think the I think the comics that come out of it were better. Did you read the comics in the Hyrule story? Yeah, hmm. yeah I did. Yeah, no, I, I think they were better. <laughs> <laughs> probably like yeah it was like hey look Link's all tied up in jail and like tried for treason <laughs> and then like it's him and the goddess Hylia that uh, send Skyloft into, Skyloft into the sky while they fight off everything that's you know terrorising blo- terrorising them below the surface while everybody goes to safety and stuff mm. that Link was badass but we'll never see him in anything because he died in yeah no you won't he was in jail for <laughs> and ages and then died yeah I still like love that when you like you find out in fact like just with like the music and everything how it's happening at the same time and Zelda's explaining to you like that you know, you're the chosen one and she's yeah. the first descendant and you've got like you're, you're the one who finds the Triforce like the original set and mm-hmm. I thought that was brilliant and it has it has some of the best music in the series too oh yeah it has well, fantastic th- music yeah but like just conceptually, like a lot of ideas that Skyward Sword had weren't very good. Yeah, and in, and you can tell just like in interviews when they're talking about the motion controls and how long it took them to sort of get them implemented into the game. Yeah, you can tell by like looking at the map. There's like three sections, and the rest is blank. <laughs> you can you can just see that they had an idea for different areas, and they just like decided to make the forest the water area as well as the forest later in the game and mm-hmm. especially with the desert and the volcano they were so similar in like the, in their tone yeah they, they pretty much felt the same as well 100% mm-hmm. yeah and it did have some brilliant moments like the, the, when you're in, in the boat and you've got the, the time uh, mechanic at the same time so you're going through the desert but the circle around you is the water like it was 100 years ago yep yeah. and you're going up to the pirate ship like that was a huge that was a standout moment for me that was just that was brilliant game design oh yeah yeah, yeah. but like just just think about it for a second like I'm thinking about it I'm thinking about it don't you worry mate just think about it for a second fingers the, are in my head I'm thinking the, the great the great sky and there's nothing in comparison to the great sea no <laughs> no no way right the stamina system was absolutely shit house in Skyward Sword but in Breath of the Wild they made the stamina system so perfectly balanced and fun fun to work around well there was natural reason for it in Breath of the Wild like it it sort of it warm, needed to have a stamina system to limit, like so you can't you're not just climbing everything and you're working towards maybe getting up a mountain or you've got to think a bit more smartly about getting up well exactly yeah but like they they what I'm saying is that the stamina system in Skyward Sword was tedious as shit like it was just everything about it was in awful a, in a dungeon it's like you better time this run up this moving sand otherwise you're not getting up this moving sand exactly it's like cool man in Breath of the Wild <laughs> it was like think. in Breath of the Wild it's like hey I want to climb this cliff are you going to have enough stamina to do it no then you better pre-plan, pre-plan for something you better find some fruits you know it was <laughs> <laughs> some fruits 
Um, yeah, well, what was it the skull sword? The stamina fruit? The stamina fruits. Yeah. But like... Delicious. Delicious. Um, but like... That in its own concept, in my opinion. Um, the motion controls, while... While they were nice sometimes, they just made some gameplay sections absolutely horrible and tedious. That I hated fighting Lizzle Fo- uh, Foss in those games. Mm. It just wasn't satisfying. No, I, I never had a problem with the motion controls. I quite enjoyed them. Yeah, but it's like you could be playing Wind Waker or Twilight Princess with your spe- with your special moves, like your dodge rolls and shit like that, that you learn from either Orca or uh, the spirit of the hero. Yeah. You could have those type of moves in your game. Or you could have... I'm going to sit here and wait for this Lizzle Foss to change which way he's holding his fucking arm before I can kill him. <laughs> well, each each uh, enemy was his own puzzle. So you go like, oh, you gotta, he's, he's moving his head. you got to slash him yeah, vertically. Each, each, each type of enemy was his own puzzle, but versing a multiple of the same fucking enemy was tedious. <laughs> It's like, hey, look, you want it? It's like, look, it's a Lizzle Foss. Ah, these guys are definitely a challenge. It's like, okay, uh, how do we beat him? It's like, all right, stand in front of him, say target him. It's like, up, right, he's holding his hand like he's like he's looking over the horizon. I guess I better slice his toes. Oh, oh, now he's holding his hand up so that uh, he looks like he's got a shield in front of his face. Better stab him in the toes <laughs> he's doing the YMCA and when he's doing the Y you got to cut his you got to cut his uh, arms off when he's doing the A you got to slash his guts exactly when he's yeah. doing the C you've got to poke his head <clears throat> like the initial con- the the initial concept in like the Deku Barbers for example was mm. was the way that it's, it's done well because it meant there was variety in very simple enemies yeah and that's what they were showing off a lot at E3 when they were showing off the game too yeah. when they yeah and like I I can understand and respect that well enough it's just like it 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 gave enemies their own puzzle but only to a certain extent before time got on long enough it's just like oh great it's another one of these enemies again how do i beat it again oh yeah i have to wait and Hmm. slice a certain direction yeah the only time the actual uh fight mechanics with that game were challenging when your sensor bar was <laughs> it was when you, over. It was when your sensor bar was knocked over. Uh, was probably the sand pirate. Yeah, yeah. And even then, like that fight was fucking infuriating because sometimes it just would not, it would not cooperate. Mm. Like the system just would not cooperate. It's like I got to move my sword around and then slice horizontally, but for some reason, Link slice vertically. Like shit, sake. Yeah. All right. I think, like, just going on the boss battles, I think that was one of the most underwhelming things for me was the the bosses. I never really enjoyed the bosses much. Well, Especially, like, coming off of Twilight Princess, the bosses was just so good in that game. No, the problem with the bosses was is that they suffered the same thing that the dungeons fucking did, and that was repetitiveness. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love it. I like Girohim as a boss and a character, and I like Demise. And that's and... right, too. They did him a million times, didn't yeah, they? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, like, uh, the Imprisoned was okay to do once. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit rough doing it again and again. It's like yeah. three or four times. Like Girahim was fun to fight because he was just this like psychotic waiting, mm. you know, sort of thing. And then like you had to time your sword shots correct, uh, sword slices correctly with his arrow shots, and like all this nice little stuff with Girahim. But yeah, like in the end, they just used him so many times. Okay, I guess that's, that's except the last fight with Girahim was good because you had to play knock him off the platform at the same time. Yeah, that was cool. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's that's the biggest problem I had with Skull Sword. It was just so formulaic. Oh, it was one hundred percent. Like you, you could just see, you could just see the spreadsheet of how they planned the game, and I, I I remember talking to you, um, you know, way before we did this podcast, but. Even saying, like, they can't do this again. They can't do another Zelda game where it's dungeon, trial, dungeon, <coughs> no trial. Like, no. it's just boring as shit. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think it's sort of come to Breath of the Wild now? You know what I mean? I think, like, like so many people have the same thoughts we did. Like, no, this isn't... Yeah, but then a lot of people are quick to go to Breath like... Um, well, not a lot of people, but there is a, there is a vocal minority of people that are just like, I don't like this. Like with Breath of the Wild, it's just like okay, 
so what do you want? And they're like, oh, I want a, I want a story-based Zelda. It's like, all right. But the last time they did that, they went with Skyward Sword. Were you happy with Skyward Sword? Mm. And then they're like, no. And then it's like, well, then what's the fucking problem? It's a hard, it's a hard thing to get right in open world games. You're, like, you're either going really linear and leading a story or you're opening it right up and sort of sacrificing that story. I mean, they still have the potential. And in my opinion, a lot of people just didn't like... like the way the breath the the way that Breath of the Wild was paced because you had to go and see the story for yourself. Mm. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? I, I, f- I feel like that's the flashback. The flashbacks were awesome, mm. and I feel like that's one of the easiest ways to put a story in a game like that, where it's just open freedom. You can do what you want when you want. Yeah, because how do you how do you plan it? You, if you're doing a story, it's either you find it. Right. like you do in Breath of the Wild or it's, you've got to go here and you've got to go here and you've got to go here and that just loses its immersion it does yeah, yeah. but the, listen though the 13 fl- the thirteen flashbacks in Breath of the Wild hmm. they were pretty much as much story as you were going to get out of them right hmm. like you could you go do the beasts or whatever and all that stuff you get your your opening and you get your ending which hmm. are the two major focal points of the story and then you have the optional points of the story, which is all the memories and all the beasts. Yeah. The beasts don't offer much in terms of story. There's a little bit there though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can connect a lot with those stories with what's going on or on around them. Like, um, what's his face as kid? What's his face as kid? Uh, Daruk. Daruk's, oh, yeah. Daruk's grandson or... Yeah. Uh, or the Queen of the Gerudo, or, you know, uh, the Prince, the Zora Prince, that sort of thing. Um, they all had their own little story and stuff like that. Yeah. They weren't, <clears throat> they weren't like, oh my God. Yeah. It's or like, anything like that. But I, I feel like the, um, the flashbacks are really great because you sort of get to an area, um, like the last flashback you get where it's like, oh, there's lots of guardians here. Mm. And you sort of don't think much about it. You're just like, oh, there's guardians everywhere, you know. You don't think much about it. Like, but in this certain area, it's just a field full of guardians, like dead guardians. Yeah. You know, like, oh. And it all comes to light. Yeah. And with, that, with that last flashback, and the exactly flashback what is, happened. The flashback is like, that's the climax of the war where... It, yeah, exactly. It's like, holy shit. When you watch that one, it's like, oh my God, that's when it all went to shit. That's what... Yeah, and that's what happened. Mm. And, you know, like even just, even just watching uh, Zelda's growth, like in those cutscenes, she's just like, I'm not even sure I am like the vessel of wisdom because nothing is responding to me. I've been to all these like goddess statues, can't for the life of me get any of them to respond, that type of thing, you know? Yeah. And th- there's just like, there's a lot in there, in my opinion, that a lot of people will forgo because they're kind of just like, you know, yeah, just like I don't, I don't want to go out of my way to discover these things. I want it to be spoon fed to me. Like, there's a fair few people who say like Breath of the Wild, it's empty. So like, did, I never felt like it was empty. Like there's, I, like just because I'm walking through a field and you know I'm not being attacked or there's not a town there or there's not an NPC there, I don't feel like it's I feel empty. like we could have had this whole episode on Zelda to be honest. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like it's empty. No, like there's always something ha- like whether it is going through the section was oh it's a ruin here. You can either just walk past it, or you're like, "Huh, what mm-hmm. happened here?" Like, now this what this was the Temple of Time, and it got destroyed. What happened here? What happened? And like a lot of these questions do get answered as well. Yeah, even like it's not even just that, but like you know, you go to all these other places around the around the map, and they're from all these different Zelda's. You know, you got Pinnacle Rock, uh, Spectacle Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got the Desert Colossus out there, which was a Twilight Princess exclusive zone yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, there's just like a whole lot of places that just make you go. And the dragons, for God's sake. Yeah, they're really cool. How really cool. Like, it was so cool just to see these dragons come out in the middle of the night. Like, it would have been like a week in and I discovered the first one. Yeah, I remember the first one I saw. It was like covered in electricity and you can't touch it. Like, yeah, like, what that was he- for Oz. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Then, then like you learn more about it like oh you, you can shoot them you can get scales you can do this with the scales and like it's got like a it's a whole thing behind all these dragons which you never knew yep and there's town you have to go save one of them mm. like you have to go save them from potential despair yeah 
Like there's 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 a lot in Breath of the Wild, and I really hope like the sequel really like punches in on that. I think. Oh man, what a game! Thinking back, <laughs> thinking back on it, that's why I'm Christ. playing it again. That's why I'm playing it again. Mm. You know, um, there's so much in that game to love, really. Um, and I hope that I hope that next time they do a Zelda game like that, that they put in put in a bit more story structure to a degree but not take away too much from mm. self discovery. It yeah, it's a hard balance. I, I would like to I know see, I know it's a hard balance. I, I would, I would like to see like a more like the more traditional dungeon sort of return to it. Mm. Like I, I know like do you count the do you see the base as like a traditional dungeon dungeon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean they no not really. Yeah. But I think the problem with traditional dungeon is like making a place seem like a traditional ju- dungeon typically means they're splitting up the areas with a shitty door opening cutscene yeah. or something like that. Which is what I'm not I'm not saying either to be like, oh, halfway through you get the boomerang, then you use the boomerang to beat the boss. I'm not saying that type of thing. I, I just mean like a like the sh- maybe like a bigger shrine but more I'll be honest with you. I do want to see a traditional item layout return to Zelda in some form. Mm. Like the uh, the runes were a fantastic idea uh, for Breath of the Wild, and I loved them. But like, but maybe yeah. there's just a bit of maybe there's just a little bit of meat missing out of the dungeons. The the runes were introduced though, so you don't have the items spread aco- like across the place, and you don't have to do it in a certain order. That's why you got add all the stuff at the start. Yeah, but like I think. Like for example, uh, when you finish dungeon in Breath of the Wild, uh, you would get that champion's signature weapon set. For example, I would like to mm. see something that helps you traverse the world a little bit better. Yeah, true, true. Or something, mm. you know, like reintroduce the hook shot and have that as a potential item, and you know that that sort of thing instead mm. of just like, hey, here's the champion's whatever that that but like the hook shot would block you don't from make getting a... to higher places and stuff though huh like the hook shot would if you if you introduce that then that will restrict you from getting to certain places until you get that hook shot no 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 i'm not saying you have to i'm saying it just makes your shit your, your time easier or you can do unique things with that but it doesn't have to gate you out of what you need to do mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. You could have the hook shot, for example, and then it's just like you've got the hook shot, but what do I use it for? It's like, well, I mean, now if you wanted to, you could use the hook shot to get up to a platform that typically you would have to climb or something like that. It just makes world yep. traversal quicker. Use it or... to like grab shields off enemies and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. I actually love that Twilight Princess. Yeah, yeah, so grabbing shields off. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are those little Laron looking things? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Red yeah. Hyrule Castle. You just like grab their armor off and like. They just run away. It's like shit. I lost my armor. <laughs> yeah. You just hold it. And you like run after them, chuck their armor at them, and kill them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's just you know like you chuck you chuck some things in there and it'll be all right. Like I'm not saying like with bombs and stuff like that, but I think I think the hook shot. I think you could have done so many cool things with the hook shot and um, Breath of the Wild. Could you imagine like sledding down a hill? Oh my god. On a, on a shield hook shotting a tree and swinging yourself around that tree and send yourself flying off in another direction oh, hey, you have like the door hook shot and you're like Spider-Man <laughs> across the yeah, map exactly even though know. there's no buildings but <laughs> <laughs> across yeah. all the trees and stuff like just stuff yeah. like that like you you don't need to have those items in to gate progress you don't need to have them in to gate progress so I just think it'd be really cool to have mm. something like that like sitting around yeah Mm. It'll, be, it'll be interesting if we get it sooner than later with all this sort of Zelda news you talked about last week. Well, look, you know, I'm I'm hoping that um, if they're doing another Breath of the Wild thing that they've got their shit together enough to be like, hey, look, it's not going to take us another seven years to create a game like this, mm. which I don't think it will. Now that um, Monolith Soft is uh, hiring for a new potential project at the moment, but I would say that they've had a fair bit of free time for a little while now because I haven't had a, like a big enough team to start recreating a game up until now mm-hmm. so um, given their involvement in Breath of the Wild I hope that they continue to help Nintendo with their open world stuff because again X was like the stellar example of a perfect open world mm. um, and you know they did that game really well and then the work that they did on Zelda was familiar, like mm. it was fantastic and 
Well, there's, there's like a whole lot in it. If we're saying it, if it's, if we're saying like another map, we're going to be waiting a long time. But it'd be interesting to see if we get like we're going to be uh, waiting a while, but not. Be yeah. interesting if we get like a Majora's Mask situation where it's like, all right, we're, we're taking what we've got with Breath of the Wild, and we're going to just like make another game using this, so they don't have to remake assets and all that stuff, which takes a lot of the time. They just do the story, mm. do you know the dungeons or the beasts or you know whatever they're going to do, and uh, ship it in two, three years instead of five, six. Yeah, yeah. Well, because with with Zelda's success, they're, they're going to be wanting to get it out on Switch <laughs> again. Hopefully, yeah. No, like, I just hope that, um, like, coming back down to the console again, I think like the the console itself is a large testament as to why something like that worked. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I love, I love, yeah. I love uh, Breath of the Wild, but I feel like without the Switch, it probably wouldn't have probably wouldn't have shot as hard because of Wii U well not, nothing was going to save the Wii U <laughs> no even Mario Kart which sold 13 or 10 or 13 million copies mm-hmm. like almost most of the Wii U's user base it wasn't going to sell it it wasn't going to move it Mm-mm. no I think I think most of excess with uh, Breath of the Wild was brand new system people liked it but it was also like holy shit this game's getting 10 out of 10s it's getting amazing reviews and that's what really pushed it yeah as well yeah for sure whereas if it was just on Wii U it's like people were like ah still whatever looks mm. great but I'm not buying a Wii U for that mm. uh, well the people that did they were like god damn it <laughs> I bought this Wii U for Zelda and now it's uh, on on the next system anyway oh well <laughs> they got to play the Captain Toad and the Shovel Knight. Oh, good old Captain Toad. Good old Captain Toad. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap it up. I think it is. We had a really big Zelda discussion there. We did. That came out of nowhere, didn't it? Oh, look. I love Zelda. Oh, I mean, and, you know, it's, it's... I do too. Been waiting, Been waiting to have some good discussion about it. So it was good to have some talks with Dylan last week. It was good to have talks with you here now. So. Thank you. Yeah, and I, should, I want to say thank you very much to Dylan for coming on last week, covering my ass. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he certainly did. He he brought <laughs> he brought a giant piece of cardboard to sh- shove right in front of your butthole. Sorry, what? Oh yeah, cover like <laughs> cover yeah. your ass. Right, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing pants. You didn't have to take that. Well, that, the, the look, it's just in case somebody tried to shoot a golf golf ball in your bum, right? Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's the first episode I missed. It, it was actually um pretty like interesting listening to the show like everyone else glad you enjoyed it yeah no worries thanks <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that <laughs> no. uh, before before we finish up the show I just want to uh, talk a bit about the Dash Awards ooh okay um, we've been nominated for the podcast award um, when this episode is up on Tuesday voting will be officially over I'm not sure when the uh, the awards go out or whatever but just... Oh, progressively past Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, he said. Um, he said the fourth uh, is when the announcements will start rolling out. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm just like absolutely stoked that we got nominated. Yeah, me too. And yeah. and to everyone on. Like, I mean, we're we're fighting hard. We're fighting hard, but <laughs> stiff but competition. I'll, stiff I'll, competition. I'll be glad that you know people just supported us yeah. enough to get to where we are. So well, the guys in the Discord and um, on Twitter, thank you very much for getting behind us, supporting us. Absolutely it means a lot. And just just to be nominated along with these other podcasts, um, three of us are in the Eight Bit Collective, which is absolutely amazing. We've got the, the Hungry Gamers and I Speak Giant, which are great friends of ours and, you know, it, it, like inspiration to us as well. Yeah. Like with what they do. The Hungry Gamers hitting uh, top of the charts in Australia Games and Hobbies, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal. Congratulations to those guys. And I Speak Giant, who do an amazingly edited Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Um, just phenomenal. And of we're up against uh, Sacred Symbols by Colin Moriarty <laughs> which is like Colin Moriarty he's, he's one of my inspirations for podcasting and just games coverage in general um, Bitstorm we met those guys at PAX They're yeah awesome brilliant. guys and they've got they've got a really awesome podcast about sort of ideas for games and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm yet to listen to it but I'm, I've been meaning to add it to my list because um, at work I'm getting free podcasts now because 
sharing with my wireless headphones i can uh <laughs> i can do that mm-hmm. gets me through the day a bit quicker and and the guys from reset too who have a, a um a huge like a huge take on the um australian podcasting scene yeah they're up there with the hungry games as well every, each week and they do a really fun podcast with games and stuff too so yeah us among those guys is it's brilliant yeah i'm glad to just be uh in the running yeah absolutely let alone so yeah hopefully we win <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like, like i said it's like oh like um colin's podcast like god knows how many people he would have voting for him yeah yeah, yeah that's it and the hungry gamers and but here we are here we are we, we're making it if you like an underdog story vote for us <laughs> <laughs> by well by the time they listen to this episode voting will be f- finished it will be i'm pretty yeah. sure it's finished tomorrow so yeah being tomorrow being monday so <laughs> f f f for f, 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 f respects <laughs> yep hit f that key <laughs> alright guys thank you very much for listening to the House of Mario episode 73 we are the Nintendo podcast a part of the 8-bit collective and Bryce if if someone was going to be like alright I want to find Bryce on Twitter what would they put into that search bar to find you at IV Revan that's I V R E V I N oh well that's very handy spelling it out isn't it yes uh, you can find me at I Druby that's I D R E W B Y. Look at that! And you can find the House of Mario at the House of Mario. I'm not going to spell that out because that's a bit longer. T H. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you'd like to be a part of our Discord community, there is a link in the show notes to become a part of that. We talk in there every day about Nintendo stuff and the uh, gaming. Gumming. 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 What accent's that? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I just realised, Bryce, I did not pick a Nintendo jukebox this week. Well, see, you're silly. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I didn't. I did mine last week. Yeah, with no, you did. No issue did. whatsoever. Mm, mm. It's real, uh, real shizzity shame of you, right? I now. quite like this one. It's a uh, the Meta Knight defeated. It's a a, co- a cover. It's by it's, it's by Don't Blink or You'll Die. <laughs> <laughs> on SoundCloud. What do you think about that one? Hey? Meta Knight defeated Famitrack of VRC6 cover. Mm-hmm. Don't blink or you'll die. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to that earlier. We'll put that on. All right, cool. <laughs> no worries. We'll run with that. Yeah, I'm getting... I'm not... Like, I've got, like, maybe a few topics sort of there, but forgot about the, uh, <laughs> the SoundCloud there. That's all right. Oh, well... All right, well, next episode will be all about Super Smash Brothers. We'll have a hands on it. We would have played it all weekend. And I dare say you guys would have as well. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for that. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Let's go. Smash hype! Smash hype!